Welcome everyone to this week's show. We're uh, in and around Death Valley again this week. So uh, some really cool uh, a hike into some sand dunes and some really interesting mines too. So these are the Ibex dunes. We're going to visit them and a bunch of other locations in and around Death Valley. Um, talc mines we're going to this week. Uh, now they're, uh, you know, it's, it's an area that's kind of off limits to uh, other vehicles and stuff. So um, quite a few artifacts and interesting stuff in these talc mines. Most people think uh, all the mines are closed off in Death Valley. They are not. So, all right. So this is a, a heart that we found in the rock. It was kind of cool. So, um, yeah, just really, uh, you know, a spectacular set of uh, photographs and stuff and some really good drone footage. So thanks for all the awesome pictures, Sharon. And uh, yeah, really kind of really enjoyed uh, hiking around here and checking out some of this stuff. Um, some uh, just spectacular footage in, in the desert and stuff. And uh, very little p few people where we went uh these are the ibex dunes that we went into uh, right on the on the border of death valley and um we're gonna get you we'll see it we'll show you some drone footage quite a lot of hiking and this is a, a great time of year to do this when it's cool most of it's probably mental you don't like dark places that are wet and uh, you're claustrophobic. You have a bunch of phobias and stuff, but it's not going to be the place for you. So you can actually uh, spot these these uh, mines here where the, the loading bins and stuff are from outside the park. So we didn't actually realize they were in the park until we found out later. So there's big sand dunes in there and there was a road that kind of went through the dunes as you can see. And uh, you can see the loading bin up there. There's a big long line of uh, adits uh, as you go. If you look further up the hill, you see that big long line. They're all holes in there and you continue to go up there. And we popped out the very top one. Um, so a pretty extensive uh, mine that one there it went back a long ways and again that's a talc mine so these are the ibex dunes um, about 100 feet high uh, and we hiked to the top of one it was pretty interesting we thought that the sand was going to be really soft but uh, it isn't it's actually fairly hard and it's easy to walk on so it was kind of, kind of a, an interesting experience again uh, you know it uh, was uh, you get up really early in the morning as early as you can and then it's fairly nice um, but even by the middle of the, the day and in January, February and stuff, it gets pretty hot. So, uh, yeah, so got some really cool footage for you guys and some interesting mines. We are on the way to those sand dunes, uh, Ibex sand dunes. This is uh, just kind of a dry lake bed, really hard, just like concrete. Used to be able to drive uh, around here on a side by side or whatever, but no long, no more now. You're not, you're not allowed to uh, go off the roads at all. The reason we're here is there's two really cool mines we saw with the drone. The size of those dunes, you wonder if they're solid sand. I guess they are. Why, why does it just blow itself flat when the wind comes? I'm not sure why they... <laughs> All mysteries to me. But anyhow, so having a solo explore today, I just got going real early because it's just if you sit around too long, it just gets hot. Um, you know, and the desert is nice earlier in the morning. So I just took off earlier this morning by myself. And uh, yeah, we'll get up to the mines. And even like say it's middle of winter and this is as cool as it gets here, it's still pretty warm. <laughs> so where we are, we're at the top of one of these dunes and I wasn't planning on coming up here, but I just couldn't help it. <laughs> uh, there's one maybe a tad higher, but yeah, amazing. Looks like a, just a real sharp line along here, as you can see. And it's pretty steep on the one side, not so steep on the other side. Not too hard walking up, you know, it's, you sink a little bit, but not very much. So, so there's one of the mines that we're going to be miss, uh, visiting. There's a head frame there. And then there's another one over, I think just over there in that valley. So we'll head to the furthest one away first. And then we'll come, we'll hit this one on the way back. Okay, so there's the bin, I believe, that we were looking at from the drone. Yeah, these back gates are fairly substantial, so. But the key to them is probably... This. So we got a pretty substantial looking mine, but we don't uh, know how we're going to get in it yet. The back gates are pretty substantial. 
and nobody's actually cut one open for us. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at talc here by the looks of it. Same as everything else in this area. Let's have a look around. I'm pretty sure that they uh, we saw a bunch of portals further up the hill. I bet you they didn't uh, seal them all off. We had to walk a little ways up the hill and we see a a decline or a pocket here or something. So, you know, by the government putting that bat gate in there now, if I want to get in the mine, i got to go down here, which is obviously going to be more dangerous than the original just walking straight in. So thanks to the government for making it tough for me. All right, so here we go. We're going down there. There's a number of pockets going down. Oh, they left some decent sized pillars in here. Hmm, looks neat. You know, this doesn't look like it's that old of a mine. It looks like a fairly recent mining style. Um, some of these mines operate up into the 70s, I understand. I don't know about this one. It's not even on the radar. Huh, pretty cool. Yeah, and stable too, really. I think that's the main hole level there. Let's go further into the mine. See how far she goes. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to be hard to find your way out. Let's see, there's some footprints in here. Huh. Yeah, so they just got all these little slots out of here. Oh, lots of air coming out of here too. I just feel the air just howling in here. So, wow. That's pretty cool. I mean, if it went right through the mountain, it would be like a tunnel. Yeah, I see the kind of the outside way up there, so that's another way to get out. Lots of ways to get out. You know what, I think we're going to go back out towards where the back gates are, and uh, just explore that part of it, and then we'll come back. The reason being is there's a lot of air blowing out of here, and we're kind of, we're not sure if the air is, um, Going to a tunnel, going right through the other side of the mountain because there's mines on both sides. We might be able to get out somewhere else. And then we haven't explored this part, so let's do that. Let's go back to where those bat gates are, where the BLM, BLM put the bat gates up. We'll get out to there, and then we'll explore the mine. And if we have to, we'll go back out the way we came in. Some interesting looking timbering in here. <laughs> Yeah, that one was a steeper one, the first one we saw, I think. So it may not be that far to where the main entrance is, where the back gates were. So they'd be trapping us in here now. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, there's another room here. Yeah, lots of wind moving around here, that's for sure. You can really feel it. We're wasting our money on an oxygen monitor today. Big room in there. We're not going to see any artifacts in this mine because, um, you know, years ago they, uh, when they mined this, um, and for quite a few years, you were allowed to take a, a, a off-road vehicles up in the sand dunes and, and go around the sand dunes. So, and look, there's one right there. I didn't even see it just above the the bad gates. Lots of ways to get into here. So for many years, uh, I guess there was probably a lot more people that came here because you could bring side by side up to the sand dunes. But now you can't, so you got to walk. Even though I still see some trucks around here, but there's not very many people around here. The enforcement action is pretty heavy. So there you go, there's this back gate that's supposed to keep people out of the mine. But <laughs> as you can see, you're in about 50 feet past, past the back gate. And uh, you look up, and there's no bad gate here. So let's see, you look up here, and you can just walk right in. So, all right, so let's explore this mine. And uh, you know, I think this is a really, it looks like to be a really safe mine for a talc mine. It's fairly new, but a modern mine, and uh, just a beautiful walk, really, to the, onto the sand dunes and out here. I think practically for anyone, it'd be pretty interesting hike in here whether you decide to go in the mine or not oh look at all the they counted the loads here 
with a carbide lamp. So my theory of this being a more modern mine might be incorrect. Um, because it's been well, quite a while since they used carbide lamps. No tracks in here, so I'm not sure if this was a trackless mine at the end or not. May or may not have been. I don't see any sign of any tracks. But you never know. More rooms. If you look at the top of the picture, you can see some cable marks, and that's where the slusher would have drawn the ore out of this pocket. Stopin pillar in there. I don't see any reason for going up into all these stopes. I don't think you're going to see anything all that interesting in them. They're just little slots. Huh. I think they mine quite... Oh, there's rails there. Well, that's interesting then, right? It could be that the rails were removed out of this mine and these were just buried under rocks so they couldn't get them. Quite likely, actually. Okay, well, quit cheating and going to the left. Huh. What the heck is that? Oh. I thought it was some kind of a pattern on the rock. <laughs> some part of a, a shirt or something. All right. Um. Hmm. Newer rock bolts there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. We're kind of seeing, I don't know what we're going to see here that's going to be awesome, but it'd be neat if we go right through the mountain. It's not that far to the next mine. If we didn't have to walk, that'd be pretty cool. Much nicer walking on the inside than it is on the outside. <laughs> Somebody had to put a little ribbon there, I guess you're worried about getting lost. Yeah. Some cable and some stoking up there. We might check that out on the way back out if we come back out this way. But for now, we'll just go this way. We're quite a bit deeper into the mountains, so it'll keep going up, I guess. We're getting the fairways back here. I don't anticipate having any problems with the oxygen. I don't feel that much air anymore. Probably the air is going up and through those stopes and, and exiting the mine that way. So a little stuffier in here now. Oh, yeah, okay, so the tunnel's getting smaller also. So we might not have a lot more. I think it's unlikely that this is a tunnel going through the mountain now. It's getting quite a bit hotter in here and stuffier. So that always means that we're running out of mine. So a little bit of guano in these mines, but no bats. I guess they're just not here at this time of year. Yeah, getting a lot hotter in here, so I would right. be very surprised if this went anywhere. Probably going to run out of mine pretty quick. Hmm. Be pretty hot up there, huh? Greenwich there. Of course we're quite a ways underground now too because you know it's a pretty steep mountain that we're going into. The slot does and all these. Interesting. So I wonder if they had uh, like loaded bins and stuff here at one time they took them all out or what? Well, or maybe a, they had a, a muckers or something on wheels that they just mucked all this stuff out. Quite likely. I don't think we'll see any lower levels of the mine. This would probably be the lowest level. We we'll get up this little raise here because there's a cable here. Well, I could have almost got up with it a lot easier with the cable. This is kind of like a little sub level. Have a look at it. Trouble is, we're going to end up hiking all the way to the top of the mountain and then have to hike all the way back down. So, um, you know, being it's pretty hot outside. You might be better off just to stay in the main level. So it's getting more uh, adventurous here. That'd be the way to put it. No, oh, that's not bad. Look, I fell down there. I might survive. I don't know if it'd be a good idea to fall down there. 
<laughs> wow. Well, it's two pretty big boards. I think it fell. I could probably save myself. If it broke? Is it likely to break? I don't think so. It would be pretty exciting if it breaks. Let's give her a try. No, oh, it didn't break. <laughs> it's two 2x12s, two but it was a long, a pretty long uh, span. So this is what we're seeing from lower down, all these cross cuts. There's a drill stuck there. We've seen this from lower down, all these pockets and yeah. There's actually a ladder going down there. Oh, there's another way out there. We had to walk another plank, but <laughs> Pretty nasty to pull down them. Uh, but it seems to be home free from here. So we'll get out and see where we come out. And then uh, we'll find another mine in this area. There's lots. Yeah, so we were actually going to head out. But then there was, we saw another cross cut. So we thought, well, let's go along there. Maybe we'll find something interesting. <laughs> so we can carry on here. There's an old explosive box. And uh, we see light up here, so we don't even have to crawl up, we can just walk straight out. As long as we don't have any big chasms to uh, navigate. Okay, so it looks like we just walk straight out and level here. Hmm. Must have had these for winches or something. Must put these drill steels down to anchor some winches. Hoists or something. Slushers. Yeah, it looks like uh, they mined a lot of tons of material out of here. And it seemed to be done fairly efficiently. But it also looks like there's lots of material left, but again, there's not much of a market for talc. Alright, it won't be easy enough to get out of here. And uh, we'll see where we are on the outside. I remember when we were flying the drone, I could see just holes all through the mountains right there. Sure, we found another mine. That's the sand dune that I went to the top of that I headed to the first mine we went to and uh, here's another um, Yeah, I don't know. We haven't really looked in there yet. So you all know as soon as we do if there's anything to see in there. Well Private property. I don't think so. I doubt it No trespassing I don't think it's private property. Could be wrong, but I don't think it is. All right, not much of a mine here, so we'll carry on to that big head frame that we saw. I'm in behind the Ibex dune, which is the, the, the biggest one of the Ibex dunes, that one there. I don't know, it must be 100 feet tall or so. So the other one that I climbed to earlier is the smaller one in behind it there. And uh, there is an old road along here, and the road would be going back on Kind of goes through those dunes there, you can see it in the desert. So we've uh, arrived at this uh, head frame here, so it looks like an incline shaft. And hopefully we'll be able to get in there and uh, we'll see if there's anything interesting in this one. Looks like there's a big rat's nest in the top of that uh, head frame and the ore bin. So you see the angle of the shaft, and so that'll be maintained about the same angle all the way through. So that doesn't look very steep, we need ropes for that. So we'll see if we can, if the BLM's got it sealed off or if we can get in here. We don't usually do those incline shafts. Uh, well, there's a pretty good drop into there. Like a black hole in there. Hmm. Looks like maybe an air. It's more difficult for them to seal these guys off. Although not impossible. What do we see? Uh, desert sand has done part of the job, but I think we can get in there. Oh, so it's going to be less steep because you see that roller right there? The cable would have hit on that roller. So the incline is going to be uh, not steeper, it's going to be less 
if that's a word, less steep. <laughs> More gradual than, than the angle of this. That's a really neat looking head frame. Yeah, I really like it. And we're shooting a bin. I mean, somebody might have had to manually tip that at the top, I'm not sure. Yeah, like I said, a fairly gradual shaft because of that roller deflected the the line, so it's going to be pretty easy to get into. I would not imagine that they would bar this off, but who knows. No, that looks good so far. It's a little cross cut in here. Wow. Right and left. Cool. Pretty impressive. And Jeff Williams says there's no mines you can get into in Death Valley. They're all barred off. I gotta keep bugging Jeff about that. There's that hole we were looking into. It was just a black hole. But it's way easier going down the incline. Oh, pretty easy anyways. Okay, we're gonna stick to the right here as par our tradition. Hmm. We're seeing a considerable amount of development in here. Again, talc, which is all that we're going to probably find in this area. A lot of talc mines, little pockets everywhere, so this no doubt will be going down to another main hall level. Oh yeah, the level right here. Um, I don't know if we should hop down there, should we? Probably, why not? Looks like it's going to be a pretty easy day of exploring. I thought it was going to be a lot tougher because, uh, you know, pretty fair hike through the desert about three miles for the first mine and then to another one. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it's been really enjoyable. Um, the trick is try to get underway as early as you can. It's a little cooler and it's actually pretty easy walking through the sand, easier than I thought. So let's continue joining this, uh, exploring this talc mine. So, this is the thing that they do here in California that I haven't seen in other places where they just Make a little ramp like this, and then the cart just goes underneath. A little unusual. They use a wheelbarrow, I guess, for something to load the, the carts. Just come over from there. And we'll continue on down the tracks here. Okay, so the decline is going to go further down. Oh, very nice. Not steep at all. We keep doing the right-hand branches, and then we'll do these cross-cuts on the way back up. Well, nice mine. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. So, what I just said, I'm going to have to get up there and do the cross cut. Hmm, might actually go in up there. Wait, I didn't see a huge pile of waste rock on the outside that I can remember, so I was kind of thinking that maybe it wasn't going to be too substantial. Lots of levels. Okay. Well, that's the risk you take, right? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see much for artifacts in these mines because they're fairly accessible. And years ago when everyone went, uh, took their quads on the sand dunes, I'm sure there have been lots of people down here. Oh, that's cool. We're seeing a nice carbide cam. Wasn't kind of expecting that, but dynamite box, carbide can. And we've got a pretty substantial collection of them, so we don't need that, but in our museum. Um, we're just going to continue on down, I guess. Looking, uh, there's the airline. It's getting a little smaller. I bet you're not going to go much further. Explosive box. Coast Manufacturing, Livermore, California. Right, what are we going to see down here? goes further down, but I wouldn't think it would go up much further. I don't think these talc deposits are normally very deep. Alright, that's as far as they mine, which is what I kind of expected. Alright, well let's check out all those little cross cuts and you know, we did see a carbide can, which is almost a little unusual in, in these types of mines. We're fairly accessible. 
I'm going to take that next right hand branch, explore that, and then we'll do the branches on the way up. So, you you know, we've been showing you quite a few talc lines lately. If you get sick of them, ah, don't worry, that we won't be showing you too many more. Um, there is one called the Morehouse we're going to go to, which was the largest one. So that might be kind of interesting because it's a lar very large one. Um, that's further up in the Ibex Pass, kind of north of, uh, of the sand dunes. So we'll get up to that one. And then after that, we're probably not going to get into any more talc mines. Um, you know, I hate to say this, but they're not... The most interesting mines. And there's a shot of that ore shoot that we saw from the bottom. That was kind of a <laughs> kind of a little weird way to load them, but that's that's the way they did it. It's a little unique. It doesn't look very professional. Continue on the other side of the shaft here. Uh, little Bartlett pears. I don't know if they're that old. Uh, the match. It's kind of old. Figs. Huh. Oh, Bartlett Paris figs. Oh, yeah. Looks like there was a, a section going in here. It's caved up now. The ladder doesn't go anywhere. Another one of these. Fun little loading uh, platforms. A small stope up there, no doubt. Huh. Yeah, pretty large stoped out area in here. Box, some type. Hmm. I don't know if it was made for a step or. Might have been, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Somebody was worried about getting lost. They put a little pink ribbons there, but I don't think we can get lost in a little mine like this. Oh, I do have ribbon. There's a muck sheet, so what they use the muck sheet for is when they're blasting the face, the ore. Uh, Ended up uh, landing on the muck sheet. It was easier to shovel off the muck sheet than off the ground. Mm, it's kind of complicated how they put the ore on the on the muck sheet. Uh, they drill the round, and then there's two two or three rounds at the bottom underneath the whole thing that they're the last thing to go off, and it actually lifts the ore out of the pile and onto the muck sheet. So, they would put the muck sheet down here, drill all these holes, and there would be two, two or three on the bottom at an angle like that, so after it's all done, and then it would lift it, and it would actually throw it in here, and put it right on the muck sheet, and then they'd muck it off. That's the way they do it. Ribbon tied around rock about every 30 feet going in here, but we're not more than about know, 100 feet from the surface. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's you know, virtually impossible to get lost in something like that. So, Especially as long as you remember the right hand rule, right? Okay, so we're already at that other side, so keeping the right hand rule going here. We'll check out this last branch to the right, and then we'll bend to every part of this mine using the right hand rule and not wasting any ribbon. Dolceki, drink some of them in Mexico. I actually haven't been drinking since uh, the 1st of January. We uh, decided we're going to. Try to improve our health a little, and I find it's easier just not to drink at all than to drink less. Also, like uh, there's been some studies that are that just came out that kind of proves that alcohol is a carcinogen. And since both my parents died from cancer, colon cancer, and something else, it's probably not a good idea to drink a lot if you want to live a long time. They say, actually, it doesn't really matter how much you drink, uh, carcinogen is a carcinogen, eh? So, maybe I'll live a longer and happier life without drinking. We'll give her a try. Somebody had a fire in here, which isn't a good idea. Why? Well, because fires use up oxygen and they need the oxygen to breathe. Uh, I better walk down here and see what's going on here.
think we're right out the shop, Pecan shop right there. And I'm just saying there's a, a ribbon of wicker between the feet. Kind of strange. I think we're in a different area now all of a sudden. Huh, maybe you can get lost in here. I don't think we're gonna. But... <laughs> all right. Hmm, we must be either a little above that shaft or something. There you go. Continue with the right hand rule. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna get lost. Huh. See, it goes down lower levels. Well, that's interesting. There was a hoist motor there. Huh. And I thought we were done. All of a sudden it gets more substantial. Wow, this is interesting. So, uh, you yeah, know, so there's a couple ropes there. I came down there, used those ropes. One for each hand. That's kind of funny because we thought we were done here. And there's just one little cross cut close to the surface left to check out. And all of a sudden, we've got into a whole another section. And um, we're lower down, I think, that we were. So, and uh, what the heck? Or are we back at the shaft again here? Oh, we are so? Huh. Well, that's interesting. We just went around in a circle here. Huh. I think we've explored everything here, but... I'm going to take a couple more minutes to, to confirm that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, continuing to the left here. We went in this way. And then a big circle and then we come to where that hoist pad was. Go to the left. We'll take every left branch here. There we go. There's another exit there, nothing too exciting about that. We went that way. That hoist pad was there. This is where we went down Oops. to the level, not below this one, but the one below that. I never did have a look at this. Nothing really in here. And a hoist tugger or something here at one time. Hmm. Look pole down there. It is a ways down. Some of this rock is kind of funny. Oh, I didn't go this way. I came down here. I went down there. And uh, going this way is the only way we haven't went now. Oh, we did go this way. All right, we're done. Let's get out of here. We'll get up to the surface. All right, so that's all we can show you from the Ibex uh, sand dunes and, uh, and the mines around there, talc mines. And uh, see you next week. We are heading up to Ibex uh, Spring. There's a, a big mine there called the Moore House and some other ones. And uh, we'll bring you a show from there further up in the Death Valley. So hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this week. We have a show every week, so we'll see you next week. Uh, check out our new merch page. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Music is by The Addits.